Hi, and welcome to the AKB Retro Games Review. This time we're going to be looking at Head Over Heels, which came out in 1987, released by Ocean Software. Written and coded by John Rittman and Bernie Drummond, and they took the isometric 3D game format to new levels. I used to play it on the ZX Spectrum a lot, and the Commodore 64 version was pretty much a straight port. <laughs> yeah. That's right. On the option screen, I recommend going into the audio settings and changing the setting to not so much, because on the Commodore 64, I found some of the jingles particularly annoying, especially one which plays every time you enter a new room. The Commodore 64 has joystick and keyboard options, which is redefinable, which is quite rare on a Commodore 64 game. Once you're happy with your settings, then you can play the game, either continuing from an earlier game or starting a new one. So reading the blurb, head and heels have been captured. They've been separated and imprisoned in the castle headquarters of Blacktooth. Your job is to escape the castle and free the slave planet. You start the game playing head and by some stroke of luck, your captors have left a teleporter in your cell, which makes the initial escape fairly easy. You can switch between playing head or playing heels, who is captured in the room next door. Uh, but the main aim really early on is to reunite them. Once reunited, they can really put their heads together and act as a team. They have different unique skills. Uh, head can jump higher and has these little wings under his arms that allow him to glide down from a jump. Whereas heels can run faster. But later on in the game, a lot of the challenges really need both of these abilities simultaneously. That object is the save fish that allows you to start again from where you've reached. And this task is quite challenging. These blocks dissolve when you jump on them and the object on the far right of the screen is a donut chucker. And once armed with donuts, then you can start shooting some of the creatures that get in your way. And I'm just gonna to cut to a scene where the donut chucker is in action. There we go. So another couple of features uh, that I haven't mentioned. Um, head has the ability to shoot things once you have the donut chucker. Yes. And heels has the ability to carry things once he's got the handbag. And at this point I could have shot the checkered round spinny thing, but instead I decided to play around with the spring for a bit. before making a sharp exit. And this might actually be a good moment to go and get a pint while I make my way to the market area where Head and Heels are first reunited. Are you still there? Excellent. This room is quite tricky, one of those pesky dissolving blocks. So now we're going to cut to one of the tasks that Heels faces in the game. Heels has to use this joystick to control the Dalek with Prince Charles's head on top. Don't ask me why, but uh, it also features on the 
games cover as well. Um, yeah, so he needs to collect the handbag in the top right corner and uh, that allows him to carry objects as I mentioned earlier. And you've got a conveyor belt there that just makes jumping back a little bit more tricky. Just a quick note, there are no seagulls in the game. At this point I decided to connect a Sega Mega Drive joypad to the Commodore 64, a good tip because uh, a joypad has a bit more sensitivity than a regular joystick. There's an extra life or two hiding under this block here. The little jetpack guy in this room follows heels around, so you have to be quite quick to uh, get across the room and get onto this platform. And heels is now in the marketplace where he meets Head, who's uh, been waiting here for him. So switching characters to Head now. And to combine the characters, you really just have to jump on top of heels and position yourself in the right place and then switch characters again to become head over heels. So let's give the game some ratings. This is a review after all. Graphics, 9. If it was the ZX Spectrum version, it would get a clear 10, but they haven't really made a lot of effort to enhanced things in the way that they could have done on the Commodore 64. However, it is a beautiful game and it's beautifully designed. Sound? Well, I don't think it really gets the most out of the Commodore 64's capabilities. There are some interesting spot effects, but that annoying jingle when you enter a new room. Playability? Nine. Imaginability? Yes, I know I made that word up. Eight. Lots of interesting challenges and clever room designs, as well as the novel idea of having two characters that you can join together to become one. So the big question, is it a hit or a miss? Well, hurrying it along a little, it's a hit. I'm gonna give this game nine out of 10. I think it's a true classic, whether you're playing it on the Commodore 64, the ZX Spectrum or the Amstrad, which throws a little bit more color into the mix. Hope you've enjoyed watching this film. Thanks for watching.